Is that what it's supposed to look like on the inside? It's steaming away, I'm gonna burn myself. It's a problem I haven't had before. <laughs> What is going on guys? Welcome back to another BuzzFeed test. This one is very, very special. Kind of for an unfortunate reason. Obviously you all know who Alex is, one of the best tasty producers, really video producers in general. And last week she announced that she is leaving Tasty. Aww. I was personally heartbroken by this. I'm sure some of you guys are upset too. Um, but then I realized that Tasty repurposes like the same videos 10 times. So <laughs> it'll be like she never left. Nah, but in all seriousness, Alex, if you're watching this, we will miss you. I really hope you upload on your personal channel. And today, as a little bit of a tribute, I'm gonna do three Alex recipes that I have never done before that I've always wanted to. A sort of three course meal, if you wish. The cheesy taquitos, the chicken cordon bleu bake, and then to finish it all off, the giant chocolate souffle. So I do have my work cut out for me today. I did have to order that enormous ramekin on Amazon a couple days ago, but it's here now. I think I got everything else to make all three of these recipes. So let's get right into it. Alrighty guys, so I definitely have my work cut out for me today. This is a three course meal. All three of these dishes could probably be their own video, but they're coming together as one today. And we are gonna start with the cheesy taquitos. So once I got everything I was gonna need to make them, I started by chopping up my vegetables. Now I feel bad admitting that I'm kind of most excited to try these for whatever reason. I feel like if you just combine cheese and ground beef and a bunch of spices, like how could that possibly taste bad? So obviously I started by cooking up my ground beef along with my onions and garlic. Once everything was browned up and sweated down, I added in a variety of spices. I also feel a lot better about using like a homemade taco mix rather than one out of those bags with probably a bunch of other chemicals in them. I also have to mix together my two different cheeses for the shell. Now I know I'm gonna get ripped apart for using a bag of cheese with all the preservatives and stuff like that, but the recipe says Mexican blend. I don't know how else I would go about getting that. And just a quick word of advice, I highly recommend that you do not buy super cheap nonstick pans because after a few uses and a few washes, that nonstick coating is non-existent. Come on, you jerk. There's no way. You know what, it's fine. These pans were cheap and I wanted a new one anyway. So <laughs> I used a smaller version, which still had that coating intact. And thankfully, the next couple ones I tried worked perfectly. Now I'd say with these above anything else, the most important part is to roll them up as soon as possible because that cheese sets really quickly and after a minute or two, you will not be able to roll it and it won't hold its shape. These are looking very good though, so I am excited to give them a try. Course number one, the appetizers. The cheesy beef taquito sounds like something out of Taco Bell. I think I'm just gonna try it plain first. Mm -hmm. If you handed me this and didn't tell me what it was, I would not guess that the entire outer shell is made of cheese. Which honestly is kind of a bad thing, because if you're gonna eat a half cup of cheese, I don't want it to feel like something else, if that makes sense. Still tastes pretty great though. Let's try it with this. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> There's nothing to hate about this. It's literally just cheese, ground beef, and spices. Uh, a very solid 8.2. Next up on the list is Alex's Chicken Cordon Bleu Bake. This has been out forever. I've wanted to try it for just as long. So if you want to make it, grab some chicken breasts and puff pastry, salt and pepper and a spicy mustard, onion powder, garlic powder, eggs, Swiss cheese, and ham. Now the first step in this one is making sure my surrounding neighbors know I'm cooking and bashing the heck out of my chicken breasts. 
I find that a small saucepan works perfectly for this, but feel free to use a rolling pin, a wine bottle, maybe your fist. Once they are roughly pounded to the same thickness, I'm gonna coat every single piece thoroughly with my onion, garlic powder, salt and pepper. Make sure that's nice and evenly coated. And then one piece at a time, I'm going to add my cold cuts in the middle. You guys may know I'm not the biggest fan of ham in the world. I'll eat it in a sandwich or in a meal like this. Even so, I'm gonna go lighter on that than the Swiss cheese, which I believe Alex does the same. Now with each one of these, you wanna roll them up, try to keep all that cheese and stuff on the inside, and then roll them in some plastic wrap so they can set in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. It's just gonna make our lives a little bit easier when we try to roll them in the puff pastry later. Speaking of which though, I began to roll my pieces out. Um, you only need one box with two sheets because once you cut each one in half, uh, you can roll them back out to squares and they should end up being perfect. The last thing you gotta do is roll up your chicken rolls in your pastry. You wanna kinda tuck the excess underneath the bottom. Um, and then you actually want to score each one of these with a fork and finish everything off with a nice egg wash, which should hopefully give us a nice even brown across the top of all four of these. Now after about 35 minutes in a 400 degree oven, these were not brown enough for my liking, so I popped them back in for another five or seven minutes and they were looking pretty dang good. Now is it sacrilegious to just like pick this up like a giant pretzel roll and take a bite of it? No chicken was eaten in that bite. That was just bread and chicken juice. I'll get a cross section. There's a nice cross section for you. I would say it looks pretty close to Alex's. I'm not happy by the fact that most of the cheese seeped out in the oven, but. Mm. Now I didn't say this, but that mustard I tasted alone, it was extremely strong. So I left a very thin layer and I think it's perfect. The chicken's cooked well. The outside of the puff pastry is great. The bottom is a little soggy because of all the chicken and like cheese juices. <laughs> Flavor's fantastic though. I'm going with like a 9-4. Now last but certainly not least is the giant chocolate souffle. This one ought to be interesting. So I grabbed some white sugar and kosher salt, whole milk and flour, semi-sweet chocolate chips, butter, vanilla extract, cream of tartar, and eggs. I also want to quickly unbox this massive ramekin. I think this is like four times the size of a normal one. God knows if I'm ever gonna get another use out of this. <laughs> I gave this a good wash before preparing it with some unsalted butter and sugar. I wanted to make sure this was ready to go so when our mix is completed, I can just pour it right in and get it into the oven as quick as possible. Now step one is just to crack a few eggs. We're gonna use six in total and we are going to use all of the yolks and the whites uh, so there will be no waste. I let those hang out while I heated up some whole milk. You do not wanna bring this to a boil just to a point where you start to see some steam coming off. Uh, transfer it back over to your board, add in your chocolate, and then mix that up until you get a nice smooth ganache-like finish. I toss my vanilla, my sugars into my egg yolks. I gave those a bit of a mix before tempering the eggs, which is very important, I have learned over the years. This is just a quick little extra process to make sure your eggs don't cook from the heat of that hot milk. Um, so add a little bit in the eggs, mix it around, and then you can add in the entire mixture into your pot. Now here is where I thought I definitely lost it. Um, I had this on the stove for like 35 minutes and it was not thickening, at least as much as Alex's seemed to. Like 45 minutes in, I didn't want to burn it. I felt some stuff starting to stick on the bottom, so I just pulled it. I threw it in a bowl, laid some plastic wrap down, and let it sit in the fridge while I whipped up my egg whites. Finally, an excuse to whip out my favorite kitchen item, my stand mixer. I used that for my egg whites, my cream of tartar, 
and eventually my quarter cup of sugar. This literally only takes like a minute and a half to two minutes, whereas in the past this could have taken me 15 to 20 minutes. I did try to time this so that my other mixture was in the fridge for at least a half hour, um, because again, if that's too hot, I don't know how it'll interact with my egg whites. But once I thought everything was good to go, I slowly began to fold in my egg white mixture. Cue all of your comments about my improper folding techniques for the 500th time. I know, thank you. <laughs> I don't think that much air came out of these egg whites. The mixture feels very light and fluffy, so I plopped it straight down into my prepared ramekin. Um, I also tried to do that little finger trick along the outside. I'm not sure if I did it correctly, but I tried my best. And then into a 375 degree oven for 40 minutes. Praise the high heavens, somehow this rose beautifully. I let it cool for a while before dusting it with some powdered sugar. It did begin to deflate quite quickly after I pulled it out, but it still smells great, so let's give it a try. Now you guys saw when I first took it out and for like a few minutes after it was out, it looked great. It's about 12 to 15 minutes later, <laughs> we have a crater. I don't know if this is normal. If I remember correctly, I believe Alex's deflated a bit too. I also don't think I've ever had souffle before, so. Is that what it's supposed to look like on the inside? Steaming away, I'm gonna burn myself. It's a problem I haven't had before. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know how to describe this. It's kind of like a warmer, aerated pudding. I think that's the best way to put it. I definitely prefer the top, crispier bits than like the bottom, kind of mushier parts. But overall, the flavor is great. I would be curious to see how this was with different types of chocolate. Because right now, it's got that slightly bitter, uh, semi-sweet chocolate taste. I don't know if it would work with a milk or a dark chocolate. But as it is, I think it's good. I'll give it like a 8.6. I think that's fair. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, slap a like on this one for me. Go and follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you do not already. Other than that, have a fantastic weekend. I will see you right back here next time. Peace. With the M, M without the A, D Put the burgers in my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision